Hey guys, Akshay here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to install and use Drupal Console, which is a command line tool to generate boilerplate code and make it easier to develop in Drupal 8. Now, if you use Drush, it's similar to that, except for the fact that it can also generate boilerplate um, code by default, out of the box, instead of uh, requiring some modules you need to import with Drush. So, Let's get started. So first we're going to have to install Drupal Console and this can be easily done. So go to the home page and scroll down. Here you'll find some commands you can run. So first we need to curl the installer. So let's copy that and paste it into our command line. And this will get the executable. And let's just move it to the local binary folder. I need to write sudo in front of this for it to work. So Let's move it there, and we need to give it executable permissions. So let's do that. And now you will be able to run Drupal. There we go. So you have all these commands that you can use. Now these are just the basics. So you can do site new, um, site install, and Drupal list to get available list of commands, and self-update whether whenever you wanted to update your Drupal console. So Let's go ahead and Drupal list to see what commands we have available. There we go. We have some multi-site module download, so you can download modules like Drush, um, site new, site install. So what we want to do right now is make a new site. So go ahead and do Drupal site colon new, and this will take us to an interactive uh, screen. So if you don't want to have it interactive, you can also put in the flags. And you can find how to do that in the documentation right here. But I'm going to be going through the interactive version um, in this tutorial. So the directory we want to download Drupal in is just Drupal. And here we have a nice list of which version of Drupal we want. So let's go ahead and go with 8.0.2, which is 0. And there you go. So it should be downloading and it's done. So you can see all the files right here and we're ready to install it. Now you might be thinking to go over here, um, load it up and install it this way, but this is taking way too long. Obviously, as you can see, it just loaded. We can actually install it via the command line. So all you need to do is first off, you need to go into the Drupal directory and then you need to on Drupal site colon install and this will take you pretty much through everything you would do in a normal install so we want a standard install let's go with English we want MySQL so zero uh, databases in local host database name let's get this Drupal now I do need to make the database so let's connect to database right here and let's create database Drupal. Okay, that's done. So let's continue. Enter your database username, your database password, your database port, the prefix, your Drupal site name, let's say Drupal console is awesome, and Drupal site email administrator. I'm just going to be making admin, admin at example.com email and give your admin a password, so mine will just be password. And it should start the Drupal 8 install process. Now this should take around uh, one minute or so. All right, great. So as you can see, it says, OK, your Drupal 8 installation was completed successfully, which means our Drupal 8 site was installed. So if you go here and refresh at the index page, You can see that here. Welcome to Drupal Console is awesome. So let's log in with our admin credentials. Admin and enter your password. And we should be logged in now. We can view more commands by typing in Drupal list again. And here you can see so many more, much more, many more than before. Um, and they all have shortcuts. So if you if you're wondering what these are up here. These are shortcuts, so if you want to generate a module, you can just type in GM right here instead of generate colon module. 
and you can just take a look at those up here. I'll be using the full names to make it easier. So first off, once we've logged in, we can turn maintenance mode on because we're going to debug or develop for our site. So that's one thing we can do with Drupal console. So Drupal site maintenance on. And once you do that, it'll rebuild the cache. And once it's done that, refresh, and you will see that maintenance mode is on. So if you visit this website in, in Incognito, for example, let's take out the HTTPS and you'll just see site under maintenance. So let's close out of that and let's get started in making our first module and generating that code. So what we need to do is just type in Drupal generate module. Click enter and it'll ask you for the module name. So I'm going to say hello world. And that's going to be our machine name, hello underscore world. And we're going to have it in the slash module slash custom directory. And our module description is say hello world. Under package custom, uh, work with 8.x Drupal core. Uh, let's not generate a dot module file. Uh, no features. Um, do you want to add a composer.json? No, you can do this if you want. Um, let's just do it. And no module dependencies. And let's confirm our generation and it should have been created. So under the custom directory right here, we see hello underscore world, our machine name, the module, and we see two files. So this is composer.json. And this is the info.yml file. So if you've seen in my previous hello world tutorial, this is exactly the same as before. You, you give a name, it's type module, description, core 8.x, package custom. This just makes it a lot easier. Now you may be thinking to go here and go to extend and enable the module, but you can actually do that via the command line as well. So Drupal module install, and let's give our machine name, so hello underscore world. And there we go, it's installed and it rebuilds the cache again. So it makes things really easy. Now what we need to do is we need to add some functionality to our module. So let's add a controller. We can do this by typing in Drupal, generate controller, Click enter, and let's enter the module name, so hello world, let's name this hello world controller, controller method title, so we'll say hello world, so this will be the title of the page basically. And the action method, we're going to say hello world. This is going to be the name of your function inside your controller. And the route path we're going to have just as hello world slash hello slash world. And once we're done, so let's leave this empty and just press enter. Uh, we can also generate unit test class, so let's do that. Uh, let's not load services from the container and confirm generation and now these files will have been created. So let's refresh this directory and you see the source folder has been made and the test. So this is our uh, unit testing file, which is all set up to be edited. And we have our source and our controller in here called hello world controller. And as you can see, it extends controller base or uses controller base extends here. And it's already namespaced and everything has hello world and for content it returns, it just returns markup of implement method hello world. So it also makes a routing file you can see here, um, which says if you go to slash hello slash world, it'll fire up this function right here, this method with the title of hello world, and you need to access content. So it also refreshed the routes, rebuilt the routes, so we can actually visit this right now. So slash Drupal slash hello slash world, let's go there. And we basically have our hello world module right here. Now how easy was that? In our last tutorial where you had to type everything out, 
that took almost eight minutes, but this just took two. So this really rapidly speeds up development. Now next we can also add other things such as a block to our module. So let's go ahead and add a block with a custom field. To do this, let's just go Drupal, generate, colon, plugin, colon, block. All right, and let's click enter. Yes, we want hello underscore world as our module name. Our plugin class, we can just leave as default block. Plugin label, default block. ID, default underscore block. And theme region, we can actually set this later in the graphical interface in the front end. So we don't want to load services from the container. And yes, we want a form. So we want this to be a type of text field. So let's enter that. And text label, we're going to say this is some content. Um, input name can be just content. Amount of character 64. Uh, 64. Description. Content to display. Default value, let's not set one. Uh, zero for the weight. And this starts another loop. So if you want to add another form type, you can start here. Otherwise, you can just click enter and it will skip to asking you if you want to confirm generation and say yes. And there, that's been generated. So as you can see in the hello world, if you refresh, you can see in the source, there should be a plugin folder. There we go. Plugin block. And here's our, our default block we can see here. So what we need to do is go into structure, block layout, and let's add this block under the sidebar second. So place block, come down here and we should find our default block from hello world. So let's place this block and you can see that there's this content and content to display this custom field that we added and we can say Drupal console generated this block. And these are pretty much the standard settings, display title, sidebar second, and let's save this block. And if we go back to our site, we can see the default block and the content is being shown right here. So that's the basic functionality of the block. You can see right here, here's the block form. You can save this configuration, which is content, and in the build, in the markup, it just shows the content. So it quickly generates this block. Now, next we can also generate content. So right now if we go into our home page, it's pretty boring. There aren't any posts and if you want to develop themes or, and things like that, you want some content to test out those things. So we can actually generate this by going to Drupal, doing Drupal create colon nodes. Enter that, and we're given with a choice of article or basic page. So let's go with articles. We can generate 10 articles, or as many as you want. Uh, maximum number, number of words in title, you can go with the default five. And how back in time the node should be dated, and we'll go with one year. Okay, so we can see that 10 nodes have been generated with random Latin titles and random dates from 2015 and 2016. So if we go ahead and refresh our homepage, we can see that these posts are here. So with images, so they also generate random colored images with circles, as you can see. And you have that. So it's really great for generating other things as well. So you can again check out the list of all the commands that are available here. Um, you can do password, uh, user debug, router rebuild, which is a really important one, and cache rebuild. Um, those two will probably be the most used ones of all of them. So now one more thing we're going to do. We've generated a module and a plugin inside of that. But now we're going to generate a theme. So let's generate theme. And let's give our theme a name. So let's just name this new theme. New underscore theme will be fine. 
under the theme slash custom, enter a theme description. So let's say, let's just say, new theme, other, 8.x, and this will extend the classy theme. And this theme is used by both Bartik and the other, other theme for the admin panel as well. So we can enter our global styling library as the default global dash styling. And do you want to generate theme regions? You can do that. So we'll just have content, um, note, uh, theme breakpoints. Yes, you can add in narrow and all the other breakpoints you want. Weights, multiplier, add another breakpoints. Nope. You want to confirm generation? Yes. And we have three new files created. And you can see this under the themes folder, themes custom. We see new underscore theme, and here we go. We have breakpoints, the narrow breakpoints, info.yml, everything here, using Classy as a base. Here's also some documentation you can use, and the .theme file. So we can actually install this via the command line as well. So Drupal theme colon install new underscore theme, and that should install our theme but we will have to set it as default. So let's go into Appearance. Scroll down to New Theme. Set as default. Go back to Site. And here's our theme. Now it's pretty styleless because that's how Classy is. And we, don't, we haven't defined any, really st any styles in here. But this is just a great starting point for developing your new theme. So again, these are some of the features that Drupal console has. Again, you can ch check out the full list at Drupal list and you can use it to really rapidly speed up development. If you ever use Drush, it's similar, except you can generate content like I showed you, generate plugins, generate themes, controllers. You can even generate more stuff like forms, as you can see here, forms. Uh, here we go. Generate form, form alter, form config. Um, so there are many things, event subscribers, um, really many things. So definitely check out Drupal console and thanks for watching.